Hi everybody and uh, welcome back to Professional Beauty Group's Upskill series. Um, I'm Eve Oxry, I'm Head of Editorial for the Beauty Side of the Professional Beauty Group and our live session today is all about Clubhouse which is the new audio only social media platform that's creating quite a buzz in the industry um, and today we're going to be talking about how beauty and hair businesses can use it. So today I'm joined by Debbie Lewis, who's the founder and MD of Salon Socials, which is a social media support agency for salon professionals. Um, and she's also the MD of Salon Angels, a recruitment, networking and coaching agency. Um, but like all good coaches, Debbie also has plenty of hands on salon experience um, and 25 years in fact, 15 of those as an award winning salon owner. So hi, Debbie. Hi Eve, thank you so much for inviting me to come on today to talk about Clubhouse. Uh, I am so excited, as with everyone else, um, this was brand new to me uh, a couple of weeks ago. So whilst I'm not involved in the setup of the um, app and I'm not employed by the company, I am one of the early adopters. So keen to share that with you today. Absolutely, fantastic. And yes, you very kindly um, invited me to join the platform. And it's been an interesting experience, as we were just chatting about before, just kind of getting to grips with how it all works and how it might actually be useful for, for salons moving forward. So it'd be interesting to hear what you have to share. Um, as always, if you're watching in Zoom, if you have any questions for Debbie as we go along, then just type them into the chat or into the little Q&A box at the bottom. Um, and if you're watching on any of our Facebook channels, then just type them into the comments and we will get through to them at the end. But if you type them as we go along, that would be great. So we have them ready. So Fab, Debbie, whenever you're ready, if you want to start sharing your screen and we'll get going. Okay, right. So as Eve um, explained, we are here to talk about how hair and beauty businesses specifically can harness the power uh, and enjoy all the features of the hot new social media platform that is Clubhouse. So the first thing I wanted to introduce myself, my name's Debbie Lewis, as Eve explained, and on Clubhouse, my handle is Mrs. D. Lewis. So one of the first things we're gonna talk about is that how do you approach Clubhouse? Is, is it as a business or do you do it as a person? And actually within the rules of Clubhouse, you have to join as a human, as an individual, as a personal profile. Um, so if you do uh, happen to jump on and see any businesses, um, they will be reported and they will be removed. So please do make sure that you are attacking all of this as you, as your personal brand. So it's really important that although we've mentioned the businesses that I'm involved in, for the purpose of Clubhouse, I am Debbie Lewis. So to kick straight in, what is Clubhouse? Um, it's, it's kind of, um, it's grown in popularity and status due, I think, in part to the scarcity nature of the marketing that they have uh, introduced as part of the marketing plan. So Clubhouse was actually born in the States April of last year, so 2020. Um, a pair of tech developers with um, extensive tech backgrounds and investment backgrounds, Rohan Seth and Paul Davison created Clubhouse. And they onboarded 500 trusted contacts to test out this audio only platform um, where Instagram leads with pictures, Clubhouse is going to lead with audio. So they tried this out for 500 people. Um, they are still very much in beta testing phase. So Clubhouse is not yet available to the general public. It has to be by invitation only. So it's created this fear of missing out, this scarcity vibe um, that has actually attracted more interest than if they were just freely available. So that's been a really exciting time to onboard. Initially, you saw a lot of um, tech and developers, and then there was a lot of cryptocurrency and investors that joined the platform. And then more recently, October, November time, we saw it roll out to marketeers. And that's where it started to make connection with people like myself, coaches in the industry, or um, people who are maybe more at the B2B, the business biz to business to business support end rather than business to consumer. So we were really lucky to be early adopters within our marketplace, which means that we have tried it at a very early stage. And if any of you are old enough like me to remember Facebook when it was the Facebook, it was actually the best time to use those um, 
connections and to be seen and to build a profile. So I was lucky enough back in 2003 when I opened my, my first salon to be able to capitalize as an early user in Facebook. And here we are fast forwarding to 2021, becoming a first early adopter of Clubhouse. So I'm really excited to talk to you about how I think this is gonna be useful for you as an individual, but also for your business uh, to gain some traction in the marketplace. So at the moment, as I mentioned, this is um, not for general release. So it is by invitation only. It's created that Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory golden ticket kind of vibe. Um, you have to also currently be an iPhone user. So this is not available currently on Android. They have actually last week started recruiting Android builders. So we're really excited that in the not too distant future, it will be available for Android users too. At the moment, if you're an Android user and you search your version of App Store, um, you will find something called Clubhouse, but it is a fake. So um, it is not currently available for Android users. You have to have an Apple device. So the first thing you guys need to do, whether you've got an invitation or not, is go onto the App Store, search Clubhouse app um, and download it, sign up and secure your handle. So my handle, as I said, is Mrs. D. Lewis. And as we get a little bit further into the presentation, if you're already on Clubhouse, I'm gonna ask you to share your handle uh, so that we can connect our community. So only available for Apple users, only available by invitation only. And it really kicked off about two weeks ago that we started um, inviting in all of our hair and beauty community. So when I joined, there were just three of us in the UK. So it was rolled out, as I said, initially in the States. So it's just landed in the UK for the hair and beauty industry. We hosted a welcome party last Sunday with 120 new signups for the hair and beauty industry, which was phenomenal. So it's really growing. And as you can imagine, it's an incredibly noisy platform. So loads of opportunity, loads of um, things to see uh, here because you can't see anything, loads of things to hear and things to experience. So I'm gonna walk you through really, if you're a new user, how you can navigate this um, confusing at first app. So any questions on invitations and access, write them down. We're going to bring them all up at the end. You can pop them in the chat. Eve will bring them out to me as we go through. So getting started, once you actually get an invitation, so I've said go on, uh, secure a handle and sign up, download the app. What it will actually do is, is it will then play a virtual game of bingo with your iPhone contact. So um, as Eve mentioned, I invited Eve onto the platform. I had Eve's number in my mobile that I was signed up for for Clubhouse. And so when Eve signed up to reserve her name, it sent me a little message if I had any credits to say, Eve is in the queue. Do you want to help her join the Clubhouse? So I was able to give Eve a backdoor uh, entry into the platform. When you join, you will get one invite. So you have to be really super careful about who you give that invite to. If you text it and you send it to an Android user, you can't actually retract it. You can't get it back. So it's a completely wasted invitation. So do make sure that before you invite somebody, you check if they're already on board, if they've already um, signed up and that they're actually using an iPhone device. Otherwise, it will be a completely lost invitation. So once you've got on, you've accepted that invite, the first thing it will ask you about is upload a photo, upload your um, details and your interests. You can come back to all of that. So don't think, oh, I don't want to do that now, or I don't know what to put, so I won't bother. Just pop something in. You can always come back to it later. But what I do want to mention is it's so important that bio section, the first three lines are what every single person in Clubhouse sees. So it's really important you start with something that really explains why you're there, who you are, or what you want to get out of your Clubhouse experience. And um, so it, it helps the algorithm, the platform algorithm to data scrape and connect you with suggested connections. It also helps you be found when people are searching. So to give you an example, if you're a nail technician and you put the emoji of a nail paint 
into or a manicure into your bio, you could later on search that emoji in the um, explore part of the app and you could then connect with all other nail technicians who've done the same. So you are creating the search functions that will help you be seen and to find other people. But as I say, first three lines are massively important. It can be as long or as short as you like. But when you go on, do write something. Otherwise, people don't actually know. There's no other way. There's no other bio, no other page, no introduction of people knowing whether or not they want to connect with you or invite you to things. So the profile and the bio is 101. You need to get that done as soon as you join, ideally. Welcome parties are hosted by the app itself, so Clubhouse welcome parties. Um, we have our own, as I mentioned, we do them on a Sunday evening at eight o'clock at the moment while we're onboarding so many of our industry. Um, but also there's a chap called Abraxas who hosts, uh, in my opinion, the most phenomenal welcome parties. He will actually walk you through every function, every button, every area of the app. Um, again, he's not part of Clubhouse. He's just just a really early adopter. Um, I attended six or seven different welcome parties to expand my knowledge and his, in my opinion, was by far the best. Uh, so do give Abraxas a, uh, a follow when you join and as soon as you can get onto one of his welcome parties. The other thing that's really important to mention about your profile is there is no um, functionality currently for us to connect with each other and send messages. So what it does give you the option to do is to link in your Instagram profile and or your Twitter profile. So that will allow when somebody is talking and they say, drop me a message, they don't mean on Clubhouse, they mean on their links. So it's really important that you have linked at least one of those platforms forms. Um, and I was met talking to Eve before we before we went live today about actually the happy byproduct of that is it's really boosting our reach and engagement um, analytics on those two platforms. So if you want to link it to your business platform, you can. I personally chose to link it to my personal one because I, I have a number of business interests and I, I wanted uh, for people to connect with me as a, as a human and, and as the app intended, uh, which is person to person. Person, but you can absolutely link your business bio if you would like. And that helps you to make connections. So what is the point of Clubhouse? It is a social networking solution in exactly the same way that LinkedIn will um, connect typically corporate B2B relationships. Instagram will typically connect businesses to consumers. This is about connecting individuals through the power of uh, verbal and audio communication. So you will get everything from karaoke rooms and auditions for um, London musicals, um, incredibly, to experts who are giving their content out absolutely free of charge. So you will know um, this week, Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal have been using Upskill. They've had Helen Ward, they've had Liz McEwen. All of these incredible speakers that come onto other platforms, you can find them, uh, or the majority of them, you can find on Clubhouse. Some haven't joined yet, so we need to get that fixed. So last week I was listening to Gary V. He is a marketing legend. Grant Cardone, the star of um, The Billionaire Shows in the States. And I got to speak to Paris Hilton about marketing and personal brand. So there are loads of celebrities and huge individuals but there were also just Joe next door um, that you can talk to about your business challenges and um, you, you, your client marketing, anything at all. And you don't need any type of qualification or endorsement to run your own room. So I've been running my own room. We had one this week about eco professional beauty, how to become more sustainable in the salon. I'm not an expert in that field. It's just something I'm passionate about. So I started a room. I encouraged some other speakers to come and give some value. And we got about 15 people on, on the room, um, something to do at three o'clock on a Wednesday. It just, it, just was great um, spare time filling development. 
So we've talked about um, everything you need to know to get started. I've talked about a welcome party. The other thing that is worth putting in your diary is the town hall. So this happens at five o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. The founders will come on for an hour and tell you all about the changes. I mentioned this is in beta mode, so it's very much their minimum viable product, their MVP, and they're developing it. So as we moan about the things we don't like, they solve them. As we say, this is really important to me, they cement it. So it's a really, really fantastic hour of getting involved in the development of the platform, but also learning about new rules or new features. So if you've got nothing doing on a Sunday afternoon at five o'clock, join the town hall. I personally do it while I'm cooking a roast dinner for the family. So it's a great uh, multitask opportunity. There are some rules and some etiquette around um, the rooms. So once you join and you've set up your bio, you'll land in a main section that looks like a little bit like a Facebook feed, and they call that the hallway. In the hallway, it's an advert for any of the rooms that are currently running. And obviously you can't see the millions of rooms that are being hosted worldwide. So what the algorithm does is it uses your bio and the people that you follow and the people who follow you and the clubs that you've joined to come up with um, solutions that they think that you'll be interested in. So I can't emphasize enough that the behavior and the way that you use the platform will determine um, your experience. You are creating your own user experience on this app. So initially I was following some of those big American speakers that I mentioned, and suddenly my feed was just full of that content. So what I did was unfollowed a couple of them um, because actually they're going to come up in trending rooms with two and a half thousand people in them anyway. Um, so I switched it over and I started following more of my really niche hair and beauty community. And suddenly I was getting loads of value. Now, once you join a room, you, um, you come in as just a lurker. So you join in the audience, just in the background, just able to listen. And if you're an introvert, that is where you can stay. If that's your happy place, there is absolutely no requirement for you to do anything other than eavesdrop. However, if you want to get involved in the conversation, you can push a button to raise your hand. The moderator, so the person who has organized the room or is co-hosting, will invite you up on stage and then you're able to get involved in the conversation. So the rules, um, when, when you come into a room, you'll be in the audience. You have to um, indicate that you want to speak. You could be invited, but you don't have to accept. Um, and when you come on to stage, it's important to remember that you will instantly be um, audible. So you need to press the mute button if you don't want to be heard. Um, so unless you're speaking, the etiquette is to go on mute. We also use this mute button, just like on Zoom, it gives you the little microphone with the line through it. We also use that feature with repetitive tapping to simulate clapping, because there's no way, um, unlike Facebook, where you can press the love button or the wow button or the sad button. Uh, currently on Clubhouse, the only way you can interact is to speak. And sometimes that's not appropriate if somebody else is already talking to, to kind of chime in and go, yeah, that happened to me as well. So just doing the on off mute flickering is, um, is, is what we consider clapping. So it's a nice show of appreciation. But obviously, you can only do that if you are up on stage. The etiquette is that the moderator will invite people to talk and that keeps the room nice and organized, stops there being this noisy chaos. Um, so it's really important to go in and just observe some rooms first of all, get a feel for the room and how it's working. Typically there will be a panel of people who will answer questions or who will be speaking on a topic. Um, and, and then you'll be invited to, to ask questions at specific points. But if you run your own room, then it's entirely up to you. Couple of other rules to make sure you don't get kicked off on day one. Um, it is forbidden for you to screen record any of the rooms. So because um, this content um, will have intellectual property rights, because it is owned by the person who is speaking, you do not have permission to share it. Unless you have created a group and you have specifically said that you are recording this session and you own it and it's your stage and you have specifically asked the speakers for permission to record. So it is safe 
safest for you to assume that it happens, it's live, and then it's gone and it's done. So it's incredible um, limited time content. We're so not used to that with these evergreen webinars where we can come back to it later. So again, creating that fear of missing out. And I don't mind admitting that in my first week, I probably had on the Friday to the Monday in between normal office hours, I probably slept four or five hours and I was attached to it otherwise I just didn't want to miss anything um, showering and cooking really went out of the window for a couple of days and it was a great way to really soak up the atmosphere and the rules and the styles because everyone's rooms are so different how can you use it so I've touched on this a little bit as, a, as an introvert or as somebody who doesn't want to share, they don't want to run a room, they don't want to start a community, you can use this as a, a valuable resource. All of your favorite speakers, all of your business gurus, whether they're inside or outside of the industry, you have got a window into their genuine responses, beliefs and statements. These are not pre-planned presentations with slide decks. This is they get asked any question and they respond um, instantaneously. So I am loving the authenticity and the transparency of what our speakers are, are giving us. And I don't think that's going to last forever because they can't monetize it. This is completely free of charge. So just how long these um, experts and gurus will give free content away, I don't know. And there definitely is a lot of discussion around how will this change? How will it monetize in the future? So personal development is one way you can use this, whether it's following marketing rooms, um, finance rooms, podcasting rooms, um, hair care rooms. Um, Imposter syndrome is another one I saw yesterday, overcoming imposter syndrome, retailing for nail technicians or lash technicians. So there are some really niche rooms that you might want to join. And the beauty is you can dip in and dip out five minutes or five hours. It's entirely up to you. The other way you can use it, and this is certainly how many of um, the prominent members of the community have stepped forward already, is to build personal or brand awareness. So as I mentioned, you have to join as a human, as a personal profile, not a business. But once you're speaking, obviously you can brand represent. So we've already had people talking about um, what they sell or their courses and using it as part of a funnel. So getting these people in at the top end of the funnel, giving them reasons to connect on other platforms and selling them uh, discount codes, etc., and then taking them through into other channels. That's really smart, but it also sometimes feels a little bit cringy. So you need to find what you think works for you. Um, some people are really peacocking at the moment. So they'll ask a question, but then they'll really obviously use it as an opportunity to talk about their business. Um, what I'm finding is those really authentic conversations where it's more natural is um, much more appropriate. So you'll have to find your own way with that. Um, but I'd be interested to see in your comments what you've experienced already. Um, what I would love you to do is, um, if you are already a Clubhouse user, I'd really love for you to pop your handle into the comments so that if anybody is joining, they have got somebody to follow. And um, if you can follow each other, it will help us build our community. One of the other things I want to mention is regarding the invitation that you have, you will forever be linked to this person on Clubhouse. And one of the rules, um, fairly obviously, is that they won't tolerate poor community behavior. So no racism, no sexism, no homophobic um, activity. If somebody does, or recording, if anybody does break these rules, they will be instantly removed forever from the platform. And as the introducer of that person, you may find yourself removed as well. So it's really, really important that you know and trust and 
um, the person that you are bringing in is going to be a good connection for you moving forward. Because the other thing I haven't mentioned is that you can earn additional invitations. So in that first week that I told you about where I lived on Clubhouse, I earned seven, uh, a whopping seven extra invitations to be able to give out. Uh, this weekend, I hosted a welcome party and a beauty networking party. I've earned another three invitations. And I'm going to be talking to you in a second about how you can get your hands on one of those invitations today. So I guess finally, um, what I want to talk to you about is, is what happens next for you. I've talked to you a little bit about the platform, a little bit about how you can use it. My best piece of advice is get on there as soon as possible, be an early adopter, because a little bit like Instagram, now it's really hard to get seen. It's really hard to find what you want because the demand for the platform has meant that it can't show you everything. It's having to prioritize using algorithms. Now at the moment Clubhouse is so new that you are seeing a lot of everything, not everything, but a lot of everything. So this is a great time to get involved. Um, I'm interested to see how this will develop over the next three to six months, but I sense there will be some charge, uh, whether it's charging you to set up a permanent group, charging you to host a room, or charging you to access like event tickets, uh, is it, or it might be adverts. There's loads of ideas being floated around. Um, as I mentioned, we are going to be starting a keychain or a follow train um, within a, a small group. So if you head over to our Facebook page, Salon underscore socials, you'll see the bright yellow logo down in the bottom right hand corner of the webinar screen. That's what you're looking out for. Immediately after this session today, I'm going to start a thread telling you how you can get an invite and how you can pass it on. But what you will need to do is be on an iPhone download the app and sign up and secure your handle first. Once you're on there, please do give me a follow. My name's Mrs. D. Lewis on Clubhouse. Eve, I know, is on there as well. I'm sure she'll sh share her handle with you. It would be a great way to connect our community to make sure you don't miss any of the welcome parties, any of the events, or any of the top speakers that we can signpost for you. So I hope that's been useful. Eve, whenever you are ready, uh, I guess now we're going to be over to questions. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Debbie. If you um, want to sh stop sharing your screen for a bit, then people will see us nice and big again for the questions. That'd be nice. And um, we've had lots of things popping through as you've been presenting, which is great. And lots of people initially are saying, how do I get an invite? I've signed up. Um, Donna's saying, I completed the application, but I don't know anyone on there. How do I get an invite? Um, obviously, follow the keychain. So <laughs> there's one way. Um, I think, is there any other advice, I suppose, for people who are, you know, starting out just wanting to get on there? Are there any other, any other tips? Yeah, having a really well connected network, having a really organized iPhone contact directory. So if I had just got Eve saved as Eve in my phone or I had her number, but not her name, remember it's trying to data match. Um, so we need it to be as connected as possible. So make sure you've got as many of your networks saved properly in your phone, because if they are in there, it will alert them that you're waiting in the queue. So it's another way to get a backdoor route rather than a, a golden ticket route. Um, keep asking people, ask everyone you know, are they on Clubhouse, have they got an invite? Because as they are participating, they're gonna earn more. Um, the reason why we do a keychain or a follow train is, if I just gave out one invite, it would benefit one person, and then they would go off and give it to their brother, mother, next door neighbor, and it would no longer be in our industry. What we're doing with the keychain is we're saying, if you, if I give you this invitation, you are promising to give it to the next person on the chat function. So you're gonna share a contact detail, you're gonna pass it on. So I know Holly and Ryan from Salonology, I know um, they've got a phenomenal following. They were able to get over a hundred people in their community signed up on, on day three, just by doing this. So grab a chain or a train, but somebody you trust, because if you are just buying them off of Twitter horrendously, whoever is selling them is, is bonkers. Uh, please don't buy them. Uh, you are then attached to them. So any of their bad behavior could block you permanently. So try and avoid that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we've had a question from Cameron who says, how do I find other individuals in my industry? So I suppose yeah, once you're on, what's the best way to start searching for relevant people? 
So the, the first thing you can do is go to the hallway. So the list of events that, that is on the main app screen, find something that's related to your industry, even if it's not 100% right, something that's related. Once you go in there, you'll be able to click on any of the faces and see the three lines of the bio and see if you want to connect with them. And then you just literally hit connect and it will be you'll be following. If it's somebody, for example, perhaps you see Eve on there and you give her a follow and you think, actually, if Eve was speaking, I'd really like to be notified. There's a little bell. Once you're following somebody, you get an option to hit the bell and that will send you a notification as long as you've enabled notifications um, to um, see whenever Eve is speaking or I am speaking. And from there, you'll connect with people in the industry who are in the audience. So you can connect with whoever you want um, just by tapping them on the face and then hitting the follow button. The other way is actually an explore section where you can search their names, you can search emojis or you can search um, popular hashtags. So there's loads of ways that you can connect and it does become easier once you just get stuck in. Um, and my advice would always be follow the speakers because the speakers are going out of their way to create content and engage communities. They want to help this along. Absolutely. Um, practical question. Helen has asked, can you use an iPad as well or just iPhone? Yes, you can. Excellent. So the app works on iPad as well. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, if you haven't got, sorry to interrupt, obviously, if you haven't got contacts stored, you are not going to match with people in quite the same way. Um, however, most iPads have that functionality. I know lots of people who have got on using an iPad. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, just as we were talking before about finding people in your industry, also we had a comment saying follow follow everyone of interest in the room, many will follow you back. So yeah, I think that's again user experience of just sort of going into rooms that you like and then starting to see who else is in there, follow it, sort of have a look at their profile. And I would definitely say follow everyone liberally. Now you do actually get sent to Clubhouse Jail if you are looking a bit spammy. Like if you're following thousands of people, they will just freeze your account for a couple of days. Um, allegedly, hasn't happened to me, so I, I don't know it's true, but allegedly. Um, however, my other piece of advice would be unfollow them just as quickly. If they are not adding va uh, value to your hallway, or if they're taking you down rabbit holes and rooms that you're not comfortable with, or actually really just you don't want to know about, unfollow them. They won't get a notification. It's not weird. Excellent. <laughs> so yeah, don't be worried about offending them. You probably yeah. won't notice. And um, we've had a question from Tasha. He says, I do the social media for a training salon in a college and I'm looking to get more younger clients in. Um, how can I go about adapting my posts to suit? So I suppose thinking about um, using Clubhouse for a younger market for maybe um, learners and students in the industry. So personally at the moment, so if this is um, salon professionals, it would be appropriate. So you could start a room that is simply called want to get started in the beauty industry or if are you looking to um, learn online during lockdown, be hashtag beauty industry, for example, you can name it whatever you like. They are going to see that if it um, matches with any of their criteria in their interests, if it uses any of the emojis that they are currently searching for, also, there's a function that you can ping people into the room. This is a clubhouse term. So once I'm in a room, if I think, oh, this would be great for Shalom or, or, or Roger, I can literally just tag the plus button and pick from any of my people who follow me and I can bring them into the room. So what you would do is maybe you start with two or three um, aspiring therapists or technicians and when they're in the room say please do ping in to the room anyone you think would benefit from this content but you'll find people from all, all over the world drop in at all times it's until you've tried it I just cannot um, explain how incredible the opportunity is the number of ears that you have worldwide is is just incredible absolutely I think that's the interesting thing about it isn't it is that people just kind of can join random rooms and try it out and see it, try a little bit of this one and then hop into another one. So you are probably going to get people that you wouldn't necessarily get if you were doing an Instagram live or, or a kind of scheduled webinar like this. You're, you're going to get people that are just there and browsing. And a question that has just come up from Sarah who says, would this benefit me as a stylist? As in what would I post? Okay, so I, I think a brilliant question. 
For me personally, as it stands currently, I don't feel as a hair or beauty professional, this is the same, you would use it in the same way that you would Facebook or Instagram. So Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, these are incredible ways of advertising and generating new uh, interest in your business to the consumer. At the moment, consumers typically are not on there or they're con obviously they're all consumers, but not niche to our industry. So at the moment, I feel like this would be a great place if you were looking to build your speaker profile or you were looking to build brand awareness um, within the industry. As more of your customers join, and you might even invite them, what you can do is host private rooms. So at the moment, I've talked very much about open rooms. You, you start a room and anyone can join. You can lock that down. So you can invite your clients to an education evening. But I would be wary about replacing something that is more fit for purpose. So there's no screen share. There's no video. You are literally just listening to people. So I would... I would question, are you using the right tool for the right outcome? Um, however, as the uh, platform evolves, that might change. But for me at the moment, it's more about your personal development, your professional networking, and your ability to host rooms and um, hold the stage to, to share a message. Great, thank you. I think that's really interesting, actually, because obviously being audio only, there's pros and cons, so you're not going to be able to do the kind of video demos that you might do on other platforms and things like that. But at the same time, it's a, it's a great platform for those who don't necessarily always want to be on video and aren't, you know, you can just, as you say, kind of go on it when you're making your dinner and you don't have to worry about what you look like. And, and there's, there's pros and cons, aren't there, I suppose? Yeah. I know Layla, Layla from the Beauty uh, Boss Academy was in the bath talking as a speaker. Um, and, and the days where you just can't be bothered to do your hair or your makeup or you've got wonky eyebrows or terrible roots. This is amazing. You, you know, nothing stopping you getting on. Yeah, absolutely. And it's probably not a coincidence it's launched during, during lockdown when a lot of us are feeling that way <laughs> a lot of ways. Um, one question we had a bit earlier from Kim is, can you give an example of what should appear in a profile and bio? Mm -hmm. What sort of things should people include? Great question. Um, I think people really obsess about what's contained within their bio. Um, and there are actually rooms on how to create the perfect bio. But much like adverts, um, there are different messages for different marketplaces, different people resonate with different styles. Um, so I personally am not attracted to those big loud American, um, you know, showing loads of pow and bomb. And that's just not my style. I like it a little bit lower in, in, in energy. Um, so I'm going to craft my bio to reflect me. Um, I think you can get really caught up that that whole analysis paralysis of actually, I don't know what to write, so I'm not going to write anything. Just put on hairdresser or just put on salon owner, and then look at what everyone else is doing. Um, rip off and duplicate, go on, copy and paste someone else's profile and then edit it, make it your own. Um, there is no right or wrong with the exception of three lines for maximum impact at the top and, and then linking it to your DM so that people can connect with you. Excellent. So again, it makes sure you've got all the kind of keywords in there and, and that people can find you. Yeah. Um, Helen has also asked, can you have your business name in your handle? So I suppose um, as you said, it has to be a personal account, but can you kind of promote your business that way? You can. And currently this week, and this may change, and so I'd hate for you to do it and it's locked. Currently, you have one change option of handle. So what they did originally was said it had to be your name or it had to represent you. And then they allowed people, so particularly as they were getting rappers in the US who said, well, I don't want to use my name. I want to use my wrapping handle and um, so they allowed them to change it however they really want this to be a human relationship building um, profile and uh, focus being on real people so I would question whether it adds value if you've got a massive well-known brand then perhaps you do want to add that in so you might decide that you want to be pro beauty eve and that would be absolutely acceptable um, however if you're starting to just be uh, lux beauty i think it starts to lose that personal element uh, they're not forbidding it because you do sign up with your name uh, but i do think go on as yourself and then see how it feels about changing it that's good advice. I think, as you say, it's important that it 
remains personal. I think that's the, the beauty of it, isn't it? There's so many um, social platforms that have evolved to be very, very salesy and very business focused. And I think to, to kind of keep that personal interaction yeah. is really good. Um, we're all craving every social platform you go on to, you are bombarded with sales messages, whether that's cold inbox messages asking you to sign up to the latest, you know, MLM or, or lead magnet or it's um you start a conversation and suddenly somebody's trying to sell you something what i love about this platform is although we're all thinking that way we're all going how can i leverage this for business which is great actually what they want to do is go slow down the best connections will make sales this will happen naturally and organically trust in the process and that's what's making it a really refreshing place to spend time excellent yeah hopefully it'll stay like that yeah um, yeah Helen has just asked, I'm just as I get a practical point, Helen's asked, I missed the first bit of this session. When will it be online to catch up, please? Um, this will be available to watch back straight away on our Facebook pages. So whichever channel you're watching, whether it's HJ or PB or, or our island channel, it'll be straight um, straight after we finish. It'll be there on Facebook and it'll also go up on our Instagram um, accounts as well. So you can watch this back if you've missed anything. Um, also, Marissa has just asked, what's the recommended welcome party to watch again? If you could just remember. Oh, great question. Abraxas. Um, and this is only my personal recommendation. I mean, Clubhouse have their own. I just found Abraxas was, was so clear. So he, uh, as a spelling, is A bra, as in wearing a bra, A bra, uh, X A S. Great, and you recommended that one to me, and it was it was very useful. It's a, a walk around showing you what all the features are, where they are, and all the basics to get started. So it's quite good. And it was so slick. He really knew his stuff. There was no, oh no, hang on, wait a minute, come back. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think we are coming up to time, Debbie, and I think we've got through most of the questions. If anyone has got a question that we haven't answered, um, do type them in our Facebook page, and we'll keep an eye on, on the in the comments there as well. Um, and also Debbie gave you her contacts on the last slide. So yeah, obviously feel free to get in touch. But for now, thank you so much, Debbie. It's been really interesting. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. And if you do need an invite, do join our, in, in the next 15 minutes, come and join the, the chain over at Salon Social's Facebook page. Excellent. Yeah, that's a great way to, to get an invite. There's lots of people saying they wanted an invite. So yeah, yes. keychain is a great way. So if you join, go over to Salon Social's and do that. But for now, thank you so much, Debbie, and thank you all for joining us. Um, keep an eye on professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash upskills or hairdressers journal website for the latest things we've got coming up for the rest of the programme. And we'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs>